It's a rather mundane job to live and maintain a lighthouse. It's isolating, other than the occasional tourist that want to know the lighthouse's history. I'm not much of a social character, but the history of the building is something I knew well. I'd walk them up the steps while regaling tales of the ships the lighthouse safely guided to shore and eventually they'd reach the top and get that view. The same view that pulled me from my living quarters every morning. Heat would radiate against my knuckles from the cup of coffee I'd take small sips from as I watched the expansive blue horizon. I'd spent a number of years in the lighthouse, calling it my home. Maintaining the lighthouse itself was easy to work. The difficult part came from adjusting to a new lifestyle. If I wanted or needed electricity, I'd had to crank a generator, and you could forget about things like accessing the internet or taking a nice hot bath. The horizon always kept me trapped there though, like waves of Stockholm Syndrome crashed against the rocks. Occasionally, I'd even get to witness an approaching vessel guided by the building's light. Sometimes, I'd even get a blow of the ship's horn, a kind of thank you. The water can be harsh though, and some nights, I would ponder on the ships that weren't able to see my lights. Even though I no longer maintain that lighthouse, I wonder still. I was a vigilant worker when it came to keeping the light operating. It wasn't much work as I said before, but it was important and a slip up would cast the sea into darkness. There was only one night where I drifted off listening to the raging storm that the light bulb burnt out without my noticing. I couldn't tell you how long the light was out for, but upon waking up surrounded by complete darkness, I quickly gathered the needed supplies and headed to the light. When the light buzzed back to life and cast its gaze upon the violent sea and its whipping winds, I could see a small glimmer on the ground by the edge of the cliff. During harsher storms, the waves would smack up against the rocks and jettison into the air bringing debris with them. Every time the light passed over the spot, the glint would catch my eye, almost like it was calling out to me. It was going to drive me nuts thinking about it if I just left it until the storm died down, so I threw on my heavier clothing and went to investigate. Rain pelted me as I walked towards the glimmer and the winds did their best to persuade me from my advance. Against the weather's better wishes, I reached the edge of the cliff and looked for the object that had been calling for me. As the light passed over again, I could see a dark object surrounded by tall, swaying grass. Picking it up, the wind almost knocking me on my feet as I bent over, I was able to recognize it immediately. It was a phone. One of those old rotary ones that you have to spin for the number you want. Despite crashing into the side of the cliff with the powerful waters, it felt like it was in pristine condition. In complete awe, I headed back to the lighthouse to get a better look at the new treasure. I'd seen a plethora of oddities wash up with the crashing of the waves. Things like boating supplies were commonplace, but every so often, something more obscure would wash up. The phone was by far the oddest thing I had seen, at the time at least. Getting into the lighthouse, I turned a small overhead light powered by batteries on. Running my fingers along its cool and black surface, I looked for a port for the landline, but found no such opening. The black metal stretched the overhead light into lines on its surface. I hadn't seen many of these phones made of metal. As I thought of its origins, a rumble was sent through my body, radiating from my hands. I couldn't decipher it until I realized that the damn phone was ringing. 
Its chime was slow and faded, like running a wet stick across a gated fence, as though the phone was still underwater. Taking my hands off the phone in my lap, they continued to shake, but they shook in trepidation. Minutes passed as the phone continued to ring and light poured in from out of the room. Once I had just about enough, I reached down in one swift movement, picking up the phone and placed it up to my ear. Before I had time to copulate a thought and convince my mouth to move, I heard a female voice. Is anyone out there? Her words were desperate and soaked in fear. I could hear the storm around her and the clanking of metal hitting wood. This is Vessel C, Elvis. Can anyone hear me? She continued. My lips were trembling as I attempted to voice a response. I, I can hear you. I felt regret as the words slipped out and I came to terms with how bizarre it all was. As she explained her situation to me, excited that she was able to reach someone, I toted up the phone up the stairs. I... I don't see you out there, Elvis. I replied to her, please. The beam of light swept across the dark sea, revealing nothing but white caps and a torrent of rain. I'm here! She screamed into the phone. Her voice was choppy and delicate, with a feeling of sorrow that only those facing their end can muster. Frantically, I searched the horizon, with a telescope attached to the lighthouse guardrail. Still, nothing. My damn dress is stuck, she cried. Just calm down, okay? Try to get loose. I'm looking for you. I completely forgot at that point that I was talking into an unconnected phone that I found on the cliff face. All I could feel was a soft ball-sized pain in my chest as her words, carried by the waves, crashed into me. I'm sinking. I can't get loose. Oh God, help me. It's so cold. Please. I don't see you, I whispered out through pained lips my head shaking as her words became more muffled in distance as the sounds of rushing water closed in. I don't... My words were far too hard to swallow. The rain smacked under the plastic covering the top of the lighthouse, small beads of water running down causing streaks of liquid. I could feel them on my cheeks as the phone gave a click before switching to silence. Reaching up, my thumbs swept away the tears pooling under my eyelids. After standing in silence, watching the waters for any sign of life until my feet ached for rest, I returned to my living quarters and sat on my bed. I kept the phone on my lap, looking it over again and again. Then, it rang out once more. With much hesitation, I lifted the handset off the receiver and placed it to my ear. Hello? I whispered. It's cold. The woman's voice came through the phone like a thick liquid, her calm voice pouring into my ears. It's so cold, she repeated. The words cascaded into my nervous system creating a prickling sensation wherever they landed. I couldn't do anything but sit completely stunned by her re-emergence. It was hard to keep the receiver still against my ear. Where are you? Are you safe? I asked, stuttering through my words like I had been handed a script for the first time. It's much deeper than you think. Her voice was cold and robotic, like she had been saying the same lines every day of her life. You wouldn't believe what I see down here. The words started to take on a more vicious tone. An air of anger could be felt from the other side of the phone. 
Come and join us, was the last line she spoke before I slammed the receiver down and tossed the phone across the room, causing a crash of metal. The phone had fallen in such a way that the receiver was facing towards the ceiling and from it. I could hear a faint whistling, like a siren call. The noise must have soothed something within my fears because I found myself laying onto the bed and drifting off to sleep. Dreams of the ocean throwing me into its depths, giving me as a tribute to the beast that rests below filled my night, until I awoke to the sound of a phone ringing. Like an alarm, the same faded and wet mockery of a ringtone echoed throughout my living quarters. More angry than anything, I shot out of bed and picked up the black phone, placing the receiver to my mouth. I shouted, You listen here! The words caught up in the middle of my throat, as I could still hear the ringing noise despite having picked up the phone. Come and join us. Her voice, smooth and haunting, slipped through the patterned small holes in the receiver. The phone thunked onto the hardwood. I left the room and began to climb the stairwell to the top, with the ringing still running through the old building. I reached the top and looked over the horizon again to find nothing but clear skies and quelled waters. When I looked down at the cliff, however, I knew I couldn't justify my employment any longer. Scattered about, surrounded by the tall and vibrant green grass, a couple dozen black phones, their chorus of rings calling out to me. I... I am no longer living at that lighthouse. I quickly gathered my things and found another place to stay. As I'm sure you can imagine, I have a hard time shaking that noise from my head. It's what comes to me whenever a room is too silent. That distant ringing is there whenever I shut my eyes, and when I'm trying to sleep at night, I swear I can feel waves crashing against me. It's been almost a month since I walked away from that place, but I still remember where it is and no matter where I sleep, the ringing and the waves are calling me back home.